Hi everyone. Good day to you. Thank you for joining today's webinar on Zimbra Proxy. We will start our webinar now. Um, our presenter today is Ronald Malik. He's our senior technical support engineer at Zimbra, and Ronald is, at, is based in Pune, India. Today's webinar is recorded, and we will send the recorded sessions to all attendees. For questions, Q&A, please enter your questions in the Q&A chat box. You will find the Q&A chat box on the top right-hand corner of the WebEx. Uh, we will answer your questions at the end of um, Ronak's presentation. So without further delay, um, I would like to pass the presentation over to Ronak. Ronak, please take it away. Good evening, guys. My name is Ronak. I'm a senior technical support engineer working with Seneca for the last five years now. Uh, today's topic is Zimbra Proxy. So without further ado, let's begin. Uh, please write your questions in the chat room, and we'll try to answer every, every, every question of yours. All right, then. Uh, what is Zimbra Proxy and its components? Zimbra Proxy, also referred as Nginx Zimbra or NZ in short, is an important component of ZCS. Zimbra Proxy is a high performance proxy server that can be configured as a POP3 IMAP HTTP proxy used to reverse proxy uh, IMAP POP3 or HTTP client requests to a set of backend servers. It also provides functions like GSS API authentication, throttle control, SSL connection with different certificates for different virtual host names, etc. In a typical use case, Nginx extract user information in some way, like account ID or username, and then fetches the route to the upstream mail server or web server's address from the Nginx lookup extension. And finally, proxy the interaction between clients and upstream ZCS servers. To accelerate the speed of root lookup, memcached is introduced, which, is, which caches the lookup result. Therefore, the subsequent login with the same username will directly be proxied without looking up in NLE. Zimbra proxy basically has three components to it, Nginx, memcached, and the Zimbra proxy root lookup handler. Benefits and reasons to use. So uh, Zimbra proxy centralizes the access to mailbox server. This is one of the uh, major benefits of using uh, proxy in your environment. So Zimbra proxy allows mailbox servers to be hidden from the public internet by acting as a reverse proxy and also allowing end users to access mail system via single login URL instead of knowing their mailbox host names. It acts as the first entry point for all the HTTP, IMAP, POP traffic, and then intelligently routes all kind of static UI requests and dynamic requests to the appropriate upstream server. Another advantage of using Zimbra proxy is its load balancing functionality. This is the reverse proxy function that people are most familiar with. Here the proxy routes incoming HTTP request to a number of identical mail servers. The upstream mail server selection can be based on a simple client IP hash or round robin algorithm. It's such a common function that load balancing reverse proxies are usually just referred to as load balancers. There are specialized load balancing products available, but many general purpose reverse proxies also provide load balancing functionalities. The third reason to use Zimbra proxy is security. A reverse proxy can hide the topology and characteristics of your backend servers by removing the need for direct internet access to them. You can place your reverse proxy in an internet-facing DMZ, but hide your web servers inside a non-public subnet. Another benefit of using Zimbra proxy is you can use your reverse proxy to provide a single point of authentication for all your HTTP requests. Although in case of Zimbra, the authentication is provided by upstream mail stores where the user account actually resides. SSL termination is another important factor while considering uh, proxy in your environment. 
Here the reverse proxy handles incoming HTTPS connections, decrypting the requests and passing the unencrypted requests onto the web servers, thereby providing, your, uh, providing the users a mechanism to terminate their SSL connections on the proxy itself. Caching is currently done by Memcached in uh, Zimbra infrastructure. Currently, we use the Memcached module with proxy to achieve caching of upstream routes to mail store that on a per end client basis. This significantly reduces the root lookup time, thereby improving the total time required to process the request and boost performance. Another advantage of using Zimbra proxy is its centralized logging and auditing capabilities. Because all HTTP requests are routed through Zimbra proxy, it makes an excellent point for logging and auditing. Moving on, uh, let's discuss each component in detail. So first component in Zimbra proxy is Nginx. Nginx is, a, is an open source software for web serving, reverse proxying, caching, load balancing, media streaming, and more. It started out as a web server designed for maximum performance and stability. In addition to its HTTP server capabilities, Nginx can also function as a proxy server for email, like in case of Zimbra where uh, it proxies requests coming from IMAP, POP3, and SMTP and a reverse proxy and load balancer for HTTP, TCP, and UDP servers. In Zimbra, Nginx acts as a reverse proxy. It's intermediary server that forwards requests for content from multiple clients to different mailboxes in the backend. So in the diagram, you, uh, in the figure, you, you see is the position of Nginx and its relationship with other components of Zimbra. With Nginx, a general workflow of login is like this. On a client login, Nginx will attempt to contact a Memcached server. The Memcached server is expected to return the upstream root information for that particular client. If the information is not present in that Memcached server, then this will be a cache miss. So Nginx will proceed to contact the NLE, which is Nginx lookup extension, to look up for the available upstream server. Once the upstream server is known, Nginx will immediately initiate the proxy session. And then it will cache the upstream server information into the Memcached server. The next time the user logs in, the Memcached server will have that information with it. And so will uh, the Nginx, which will uh, not need to contact the Nginx lookup extension again. There are a lot of details for specific cases, which uh, we can discuss at a later stage. Moving on to Memcached. Memcached is a high performance distributed memory object caching system. Root information is cached for further use in order to increase performance. Zimbra Memcached is a separate package that is recommended to be installed along with Zimbra proxy. Though you do not need to install Memcached with multiple instances of Nginx, but we recommend having Memcached installed with every instance of your Nginx in Zimbra. The default port used by Memcached is double one two double one, and it is controlled by Zimbra mem Memcached bind port, which is the parameter that controls the port number in the configuration of Zimbra. Memcached is used to cache five kinds of information. It caches the alias to account mapping. It caches the account name to root information, the account ID to root information, the login IP ad address to login count, which is used for IP-based throttling mechanism. Also, it caches the account name to login count, which is again used for user-level uh, throttling of your connections. The third component in Zimbra proxy is Zimbra proxy root lookup handler. This is a servlet 
which is also uh, which is also called NLE, as we discussed earlier. It is located on Zimbra mailbox servers and not on the proxy server. The other two components are there on the proxy node, whereas NLE resides on the mailbox node. This servlet handles queries from user account root information, such as the server and port number where the user account resides. The port number of NLE is 7072, which should be enabled in mailbox server after setting Zimbra reverse proxy lookup target attribute to true on server level configuration. So as you can uh, see, the client connects to the Zimbra proxy on either 8 port 80 or 443 for HTTP requests, or it can be IMAP or POP. Then Nginx looks up into memcached for any cached information. If it doesn't find that information in memcached, then it goes to the NLE and query for the account information. Once Nginx gets the account information, it proxies the request, and it stores that information in memcached so that if the user logs in the next time, that information will be fetched from memcached rather than getting it from the NLE. The following sequence shows the architecture and flow of Zimbra proxy. End client connects to Zimbra proxy using HTTP, HTTPS, POP or IMAP ports. The next step is when the Zimbra proxy receives this incoming connection, the Nginx component sends an HTTP request to Zimbra proxy root lookup handler component. Zimbra NLE then locates the root information for the account being accessed and returns this to Nginx. The memcached component stores this information for the configured period of time. By default, this time is one hour. So by default, this information will be stored in cache for memcache for one hour. Nginx will use this root information instead of querying the Zimbra proxy root lookup handler until the default period of time has expired. And then Nginx uses the root information to connect the client to the Zimbra mailbox. Zimbra proxy connects to the Zimbra mailbox and initiates the web or mail proxy session. The end client behaves as if it is connecting directly to Zimbra mailbox. So that for the end client, all this is transparent. It, it will not know whether the information is coming from memcached or whether it is coming from NLE. For the end client, it is as good as it is coming directly from the Zimbra mailbox. Zimbra Nginx for POP, IMAP, or HTTP proxy configuration is generated by ZM proxy gen config generation script. This script reads in the proxy configuration template files and generates the Nginx config files after performing keyword substitution on the template files with values from the LDAP configuration. To simplify the configuration, the Nginx config configuration files have been split up into different config files based on functionality. The ZM proxy conf gen is usually never invoked directly. It is invoked automatically by ZM proxy CTL. So whenever you restart your proxy service, ZM proxy conf gen is invoked. In general scenarios, you don't need to run ZM proxy conf gen manually. It will automatically be invoked whenever you restart your proxy. Servers. Here are some of the commands that we can use to find useful information. First is ZMPro GARPU GARPU, which stands for Get All Reverse Proxy URLs. This gives us a list of all the root lookup handlers used by Nginx for mail web root discovery. Basically, all your upstream servers that are there will be uh, displayed here. So in case, suppose you add a new mailbox server and you're not getting that server in the output of ZMPro ZM Garpu, you probably need to check the value of ZM, uh, Zimbra reverse proxy lookup target on your mailbox node. So as mentioned in the second point, 
ZMPro Garpu will list all the servers for which Zimbra reverse proxy lookup target is true. For any server that you have where you have set Zimbra reverse proxy lookup target to false, ZMPro Garpu will not list that server. To add a server to the root lookup handler list, you need to execute this command, which is ZMPro modify server, then the host name of the mailbox node, which you want to include, then Zimbra reverse proxy lookup target attribute, and its value should be true if you want to include this in the root lookup handler list. If you want to remove a particular server from a root lookup handler list, you need to set the value of Zimbra reverse proxy lookup target to false. A quick note here, only add servers which are running mailbox service to the root lookup handler list. Do not add your MTAs or LDAP servers to, the, uh, to this list. The output of ZMPro Garpu looks like this. So if, let's say if you have two mailbox servers, your output should look like Moving on to architecture of Zimbra proxy, as we have already discussed, the, ar ar the architecture of Zimbra proxy basically looks like this. So the, the clients come with their request on port 443 or 80 for HTTP or HTTPS or IMAP or POP. It will hit the Zimbra proxy first. If the information is not there in memcached, it will go to NLE on the mailbox server, and the information is fetched from there and returned to Nginx. And then Nginx will store that information in memcached and return uh, proxy the request from client to the mailbox node. The authentication happens on LDAP. So proxy will not go directly to LDAP for authentication. It will go to the mailbox node, wherever the mailbox of that particular account resides and then mailbox will go to LDAP for authentication. So this is how Zimbra proxy looks like if you talk in terms of architecture. These are common uh, proxy ports. So for HTTP, the port, by default, the port used is 80 by Zimbra proxy. For HTTPS, 443 is the port. POP3 uses 110. POP3S uses 995. IMAP 143. IMAP S993. If you want to access your admin console from the proxy node, then the proxy admin console port is 9071. <clears throat> the root lookup handler port is 7072. If the proxy is configured, the HTTP backend port is 8080. This is the port on which your mailbox would be listening. Similarly, for HTTPS requests, the backend port would be 8443. For POP3, it would be 7110. For POP3S, it would be 7995. For IMAP, it would be 7143. For mailbox admin console, the port is 7071. So if you are, uh, if you are outside your network, you can directly you cannot directly connect to the to your mailbox. You have to first come to the proxy, and then proxy will proxy your request to the mailbox node. But if you are, you know, internal to the ZCS network, then you can directly connect to the mailbox node on these given ports. Now, how to configure Zimbra proxy? After installation, after installing your Zimbra servers, to configure a Zimbra pro HTTP proxy on each Zimbra mailbox server that you have or you want to proxy with, you, you can enable the proxy for web by this command. The command is slash opt slash Zimbra lib execute zm proxy config hyphen e hyphen w then hyphen h 
and then you specify the mailbox node where you are, which you want to enable your proxy request from. This configures the following five attributes on, on the mailbox server. It sets the Zimra mail refer mode to reverse proxied. It sets Zimra mail port to 8080. It sets Zimra mail SSL port attribute to 8443. It sets Zimra reverse proxy lookup target to true automatically. And it sets the Zimra mail mode to HTTP. You need to restart the uh, services after after this command. So you can just run VM control restart. You can configure each domain with public service host name to be used for REST URLs, email, and briefcase folders. For example, if you have, let's say, two domains, one is example.com, example1.com, and another one is example2.com. So you can configure your public service host names on the proxy server so that you can access your your server uh, or proxy node with that uh, host name. It, so you can do a zmproof modify domain example.com and then Zimra public service host name and then the name host name that you want to set. Public service protocol that you want to use can be set using Zimra public service protocol attribute in a similar way. Now that was done on mailbox node. Similarly, you need to run this command on the proxy node to enable proxy so proxy configurations on, on, on the uh, proxy installation. On proxy server where your proxy service is installed, just run the, this command so that it will enable the proxy for, for web. So here, there are four modes per se, both HTTP, HTTPS, and redirect. HTTP is, is not supported anymore, so you can either set the mode to redirect or HTTPS. You can even set it to both, but again, since HTTP is not supported any uh, further, so there is no point in uh, setting it to both. So again, this configures the Zimra mail refer mode to reverse proxied. It sets the Zimra mail proxy port to 80. It sets the Zimra mail SSL proxy port to 443. And then it sets Zimra reverse proxy HTTP enabled to true. And it sets the Zimra reverse proxy mail mode to whatever you are setting it to. If it is hyphen X, then if it is uh, HTTPS here, so it will, uh, then it will set a Zimra reverse proxy mail mode to HTTPS. If you set it to redirect, then it will set it to redirect. Similar, so these, are, these were the commands to configure your web proxy. Similarly, you can configure your IMAP and POP proxy using this command as well. Let me just rewind a slide. So here, if you notice, the parameters were hyphen E hyphen W hyphen H, and here it is hyphen E hyphen M hyphen H. So basically, hyphen M uh, means mail proxy, hyphen W meant web proxy. So if you run this command, this will configure the mail proxy part on, on the mailbox nodes. So it will set the Zimra IMAP bind port to 7143, Zimra IMAP SSL bind port to 7993, Zimra POP3 bind port to 7110. It will also configure Zimra IMAP clear text login enabled to true, Zimra reverse proxy lookup target to true, and Zimra POP3 clear text login enabled to true as well. Just restart the services after running this command on both proxy and mailbox uh, servers by by ZM control restart, and this will configure your mail proxy for you.
the configuration file hierarchy in nginx is such that the top level configuration file is opt zemra conf nginx.conf and this file includes the main config memcache config mail config and web config files the mail config in in turn includes the configuration for imap imap s pop3 and popcs the web config includes the configuration for http and https the template files follow exactly the same inclusion hierarchy and each configuration file has a corresponding template file from which it is generated each template file resides in opt zimbra conf nginx templates each corresponding config file resides in opt zimbra conf nginx includes excluding the top level config file which is in opt zimbra conf nginx nginx.com so this is the configuration file hierarchy which which is followed in zimbra nginx these are some of the useful proxy commands garpu we have already discussed just to summarize it, to list all the upstream mail store servers or the nles that should be used for reverse proxy lookup by proxy we use them as em pro garpu it it will list all the back end upstream mail store servers that are enabled for proxying the requests to list all the upstream mail store servers that are reverse proxied by the proxy we use zm pro garp b to publish into sasalauth.d.com the servers that should be used for sasalauth.d.com mta auth we use zm pro get all mta auth urls and to list all the memcached servers we use zm pro hyphen get all memcached servers so this is how the nginx access.log and nginx.log file look uh, we'll do a quick demo to show you how exactly proxy works let me just share my browser so i have two servers in my browser or in my in my lab one is vm1 and another one is vm2 so both the servers have proxy services installed as well as mailbox services installed just to uh, show you guys how it looks in the log files i'll just show you the i'll just share it with you just give me a moment so this is my vm1 okay so this is my vm1 let me show you the 
So let me show you the output of Darku first. So here, as you can see, there are two servers listed here, VM1 and VM2. Let us see what is there in the nginx.log file. So if you look at uh, the log file in, in the presentation, we have our client IP, then we have our server IP, the backend server IP as well. Similarly, if you uh, look at the logs here, my client IP is this, then my host is this, and, and my proxy uh, node is this. Similarly, if you uh, see, this is my backend URL, and my referrer or the proxy server is vm1.zimra0.lab. Similarly, if you look at the nginx.access.log, you'll see my client IP here, which browser I'm uh, connecting from, the OS, and then my backend server IP and the port, and the front end or the proxy server IP and the port where my client has connected. So Nginx error logs, which default to info level for logging, log file to begin with for troubleshooting proxy related issues is nginx.log and nginx access.log. So any information about the client requests after the request is processed is logged in nginx.log. It can be used to track incoming requests and their response codes being sent by the server, by the backend server, I mean. Whereas the nginx.access.log gives us a good overview of what the proxy is doing, basically which IP it is trying to connect to or which port it is trying to connect to. Sometimes the ports are not configured properly so and, and the end user gets an error while connecting to the Zimbra server. So in the nginx access.log we can see clearly which port the client is trying to connect to or which port the proxy server is trying to connect to on the backend URL. So these are two good uh, files to start a troubleshooting if you are facing any issues with your Zimbra proxy. And with this, we end uh, today's session. If you guys have any questions and answers, just questions, just let us know. Thank you, Rona. So we are open for Q&A now. Um, as mentioned, you can key in your Q questions in the Q&A box where you can find it on the top right-hand corner. Um, so far, we do not have any questions, Rona. So let's give it a few minutes if see anybody. Ah, Hilde. Hilde is asking about... Step-by-step um, uh, -step guide URL. Do we have a step-by-step -step guide URL, Rona? Uh, Serene, I don't see a question here in the Q&A section. I at least. Uh, yeah, they decided to type in the chat box. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, all the uh, lookup extension servers are looked up to find the root one by one. So that, that is the question from Srikant. And before that, there's a question from Hilde. Uh, here it is asking if there is step by step setup guide URL. Uh, if you can ask him to post uh, the question in the QA session, uh, it will be great because uh, I do not see any questions here. I, he 
you, Dave. Can you please type it in the Q&A box? Because the chat is actually, you're sending it to me privately, so I don't think Ronak can see your question. Step-by-step uh, -step guide URL. Okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, let us uh, let me share it with you. Just give me a couple of seconds, okay? Pain has asked, can the default time configuration for Memcached be changed? Yes, uh, it can be changed. Pay. It, there is an attribute to change it. Uh, let me quickly get it for you. So Zamra Memcached client expiry seconds is the attribute. So typically for Zimbra proxy, the kind of uh, issues uh, that our clients face is something where the uh, end user is not able to connect to the Zimbra server, or either they are getting 502 errors or 503 errors. These can be quickly, uh, I mean, you can quickly troubleshoot it by looking at the nginx.log file. So there are pointers everywhere for example, if you're getting a 502 error, it is typically because your DOS filters are misconfigured. So I would recommend you to, you know, check your nginx.log and uh, subsequently your mailbox.log and on the mailbox node to see what exactly is going wrong there. Uh, another common issue that uh, our client's report is where they have configured a new mailbox server and all the accounts that are there on the new mailbox node, when they are logging in, they are seeing the, uh, the folder list is gone. So they, basically, the, the client is not able to see any folders in, in the uh, browsers. That is typically when your Zimbra mail uh, refer mode is not set to reverse proxied. Another uh, common problem that uh, we see our clients uh, complaining about is where your SSL certificates are not uh, properly visible. I mean, the clients say that they have configured their SSL certificates, but still they're not able to get the correct certificates in the browser. I would recommend restarting your services once because Typically what happens is the client deploys the certificate, but they forget to start or, I mean, forget to restart the services. And that is actually one, uh, one of the common reasons for not seeing correct certificates. Ronak, we have a question. Is there any plan to include SMTP proxy in the Zimbra, uh, in the Zimbra proxy? Uh, we have an open enhancement request uh, to support SMTP over proxy, which is uh, not yet fixed. But we are we have plans to include it in a further uh, in a future release. Uh, Sandeep has asked if uh, user is compromised. How can proxy be helpful to control? The user, com uh, if the user uh, account gets compromised, there is little that you can do from the proxy's end. It is more to do with the user mailbox than user proxying the request to the uh, Zimbra proxy. So in order to get the account back, I would recommend you know changing the password, applying a stricter password control policy, and restarting your MTA just uh, because without restarting your MTA, the session will, uh, will not end. So in terms of Zimbra proxy, there is little that can be done if a user account get, gets compromised. All right, thank you, Rana. Um, I don't see any more questions. Um, has anybody sent you a question directly? Uh, no, I don't see any uh, at my end as well, Serene. All right. Great. So thank you, Ronak, and thank you all the participants. 
um, we will be sending an online survey. Your feedback is important to us, so please take a few moments to complete the survey uh, for us. All right, then we'll end the session today. Um, thank you, everybody.